Hi everyone, welcome to the session 4 of uh, How Computers Work series by TMK School. This is Ari, your guide. So today is uh, one of the important sessions that we that we are uh, that we have ever discussed at TMK School. Also, even in future, this session will remain one of the important sessions at TMK School because uh, uh, today we are going to discuss about the evolution of computers uh, like how it all started so yesterday we have discussed about uh, the differential engine and then uh, analytical engine by Charles Babbage and uh, by now you might have understood or you might have realized why Charles Babbage is called the father of computer okay uh, now moving on uh, so again as usual I have highlighted all this stuff uh, before discussion so that you can follow me easily I can go for presentations also uh, but the main reason for not doing presentations is to I I want you to read this article after finishing the uh, finishing this session on YouTube so that you'll have a clear idea and by highlighting uh, the text here itself when you read you'll get to know okay this ha point has been discussed already so just to uh, create a memory spots simply okay now moving on uh, in 1939 there is a scientist a computer scientist named Howard Icahn uh, taking Charles Babbage's differential engine as a inspiration he built electromechanical computing device uh, so in simple words computing you already know simply calculating device means you already know machine Electromechanical means it uses both electricity as well as uh, the concept of mechanics like gears or uh, wheels and all this stuff. So he also uh, you can see here uh, for more details okay. Uh, I am not going to discuss everything but as basic overview even if, uh, in a way in, a, in simple terms uh, so that even a kid with basic English, English knowledge can understand. Uh, but for more in detail, uh, in detail uh, knowledge, you'll have to read the article by yourself. Okay. Uh, so and also he has used relays, uh, relay as a switch. So relay is a concept you must understand. So this relay is nothing but a switch. So at a fundamental level, how computer works with electricity? How does it work with electricity? And we call it usually binary numbers, right? To on or off, true or false one or zero and this one and zero is nothing but binary language so what is binary language binary language is nothing but electricity on or off uh, let's see here uh, see i have written here simple demonstration of uh, electric so electric electric circuit and uh, if you uh, click here tools on google images uh, you can select gif file also so now let's see uh, you can understand easily Yeah, this one would work. Yeah, can you see this? See. So, this is nothing but a relay you can consider. So, relay is nothing but. Yeah, also here, also you can see. see. Okay. So, relay is electric, uh, nothing but a switch. It consists of electronic ma electric ma electromagnetic uh, circuit and that makes this circuit operate like on and off so as you pull off the magnet the uh, the the bar iron bar would fell uh, would fall on the other rod and the electricity would pass as you put the magnet and the magnet or uh, the iron rod or whatever it is it would go up and the and there is no more electricity passing in the circuit so that is nothing but a relay okay so he has uh, built a machine called ASCC which is nothing but uh, automatic sequence controlled calculator and later on this has been uh, renamed to Harvard mark one and the size you can see here it is 8 feet high and 51 feet long can you imagine a computer with this size that's that's insane right and then Grace Hopper, uh, uh, remember this lady's name, uh, recently she has uh, expired, but uh, really played a key role in the computing field. 
and uh, uh, this woman uh, wrote the manual uh, for this ACCR Harvard Markwell and then 1941 there was a German scientist named Conrad Juice he built a machine called Z3 and this was completely made with the uh, same uh, using relays and this computer has 2600 relays that means 2600 uh, switches so what does it mean so if you have one switch here it you can okay you can uh, perform one logic either on or you understood i mean or you can say two so what does it mean if you have more switches you can perform more logic right the more switches you have the more logic you can perform logic in the sense the more operations you can perform so what's the memory length uh, i have written here 64 words of memory okay conrad juice z3 the machine name is z3 it has 64 words of memory so in, okay word is nothing but a block of memory we call it as uh, this you can see here uh, so what is it oh, and also memory means what memory is nothing but ram you can imagine this uh, okay it imagine this as ram whenever i say it memory that is nothing but ram so what what's the memory of uh, this uh, z3 computer it is 64 words it means 64 blocks of memory so each word what is the size of each word that is 22 bits 22 bits so let's perform a small uh, calculation like how much uh, memory this computer can hold 22 bits into into 64 uh, my keyboard isn't working yeah it is 1408 mm -hmm. bits so let's convert this into bytes what we have to do simply divided by 8 why 1 byte is equal to 8 bits so this is 176 bytes can you imagine how how small the memory is see it it is just 176 bytes of memory now let's calculate my laptop the laptop that i am using currently this has 8 gb ram 8 gb ram means 8 into 8 into 1024 mb right into so this is 8192 mb into let's calculate this into kb also 8192 into again 1024 this is kb now let's convert this into bytes into 1024 bytes so into what did i do i'm sorry 83 Eight eight six zero eight into one zero two four bytes. This much. So uh, I've written here. Uh, you can see here. This is simply sixty four million uh, billion bits of information. This laptop uh, memory, uh, or in simple terms, compared to Z three. Uh, this Z three machine in nineteen forty one. And this laptop was bought in uh, 2017. It is 45 million times better. So 2017 minus 1941. In 76 years, 45 million times better memory I am holding uh, what uh, uh, today. So which is uh, this is really insane, right? So now then, uh, one more thing you must understand here, 22, by, uh, 22 bits. So for example, imagine I want to store 100 uh, in this computer, 100 number. So we write 100 number, uh, okay, here uh, I have already written, so I'm explaining the same here. So 100 can be written in binary language this way, 101010. If you don't know by how to write binary language, just drop me in the comments if you are interested in learning that stuff i'll i'll take it i'll uh, i'll record a different uh, video session for that okay so uh, we write like this but here if you see this is one two three four five six seven only seven bits now what we do is but the, uh, as the length of the memory block or word is 22 bits we add 15 zeros 15 leading zeros before this 100 
to make it 22 bit and this is what we do in C program also right if you declare uh, int a equal to 10 or 2 whatever number int is usually depends on the platform I mean uh, machine uh, dependent the size if it is 4 bytes 4 into 8 32 bits if you store the uh, 30 uh, uh, same 100 number int a equal to 100 what happens is uh, 32 minus 7 which is 25 you will get 25 zeros here 25 zeros here and then your number here. so this is how okay works so ram is nothing but a canvas uh, we will discuss this ram concept even in more detail when we discuss algorithms and uh, data structures for now let's move forward uh, and also one more key term you here you have to you must understand this computer has a clock frequency of uh, 5 to 10 Hertz okay you might have seen this uh, heads uh, so often when you buy a computer or a laptop on Amazon right uh, that will it will it shows you like uh, 2.4 gigahertz i3 Intel and so on so on we will discuss that also maybe in the next session but for now we'll stick to this 2.4 gigahertz first so what does it mean this 5 to 10 hertz hedge is nothing but the unit of uh, frequency okay frequency is nothing but in physics you might have uh, studied already number of operations or uh, uh, number of uh, uh, number of operations can be performed in unit time of second a unit time right so same thing here also 5 to 10 hertz that means simply 5 to 10 cycles per second so what is the meaning of cycle cycle is nothing but one complete operation that operation can be fetching an instruction from your operating system or uh, you printing for example I am writing A here but before writing this A as if it's nothing but okay uh, like uh, filling up the pixels right so that is nothing but operation so it means it can perform 5 to 10 operations per second this juice computer and whereas uh, the current laptops for example if your laptop has a clock frequency of 2.4 gigahertz that means your CPU can perform 2.4 cycles per second or 240 crores operations per second 240 crore operations per second let's have a uh, small calculation fun calculation if a human being uh, lives for 75 years how many times would his heart be so uh, let me give this as an assignment if you can do this assignment you will get uh, 100 TMK coins for sure uh, just drop me the answer in the comments I will definitely uh, transfer TMK coins when we release uh, the whole concept of uh, the crypto that we have been working on now so the question is simply if a human being lives for 75 years and uh, on an average heart beats for 72 times as a minute then what would be the total count of uh, total heartbeats in his or her lifetime that's the question so uh, this is all about z3 computer so this uh, this one has uh, the memory of uh, i forgot 64 into 22 1040 by 8 176 bytes 176 bytes of memory also this one has uh, the clock frequency of uh, 5 to 10 Hz it, is, uh, it means it can perform 5 to 10 operations per second and then in 1942 uh, two more scientists uh, John Vincent and uh, Clifford they both came up with one more concept called uh, ABC machine or uh, Atanas of Berry computer and this is fully automatic electronic digital computer means they were they 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 have not uh, they have stopped using this mechanical mechanical concept like using gears wheels and all this stuff and uh, they have started using this vacuum tube concept i mean more than relays so as i said relay is a mechanical concept right using this magnetic magnet concept and then later on we came up with a new concept vacuum tubes vacuum tube is also a switch simply a switch 
but this works with electricity using a heat mechanism as you heat up the vacuum tube what happens is it emits elect uh, electrons and thereby electricity passes through the circuit and uh, and vacuum tubes also have uh, played a key role that we will see in the next few minutes and then in 1939 to 1945 enigma this is one of the uh, important uh, time period in our world's history cause of uh, cause germany german uh, the german government had uh, innovated this enigma and the problem with this is they they were using this enigma machine to transfer messages to uh, higher uh, ofi uh, officials like where to attack next in uk like when this war was going on and then with the help of uh, uh, the british government had to take the help of alan turing and then they formed a team and at last they were able to crack this enigma computer uh, and the problem with this enigma is for each letter in a message that you type the whole mechanism or the encryption concept would get changed for example if i say a b c or uh, whatever i 1 2 3 we will assign like up to z it would be 26 right if i say hello hello will have so the same uh, some numbers always it follows the same pattern a b c d e f g h which is 8 and uh, this is 5 and so on right but for enigma they have used it like it made it so complex for each letter you type it would change the whole uh, mechanism of encryption uh, and also it's, it's <laughs> this is a small uh, example that i've given that i've given but they have used so hard like the algorithm itself was so hard to decrypt uh, but at last uh, the Alan Alan turing and team was able to crack the enigma and they were able to decrypt and as a result uh, Alan Turing played a key role by shortening the war about two to four years and they had really saved millions of lives and there is a movie called the imitation game it's available on uh, Netflix and uh, I don't know I think you on YouTube also you can get this movie I would highly recommend uh, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch if you see uh, Sherlock Holmes, uh, this was the guy, or Doctor Stranger. So he played in this movie as a as Alan Turing. I would highly recommend you to watch this movie. The movie name is The Imitation Game. And then in 1943, Max Newman, uh, who was working very closely uh, with uh, Alan Turing, uh, built uh, a Colossus, uh, one more uh, machine uh, to decrypt and the even more harder uh, algo uh, encryption than Enigma that was used by uh, German officials to transfer the messages and uh, they were able to do that also and they also made with vacuum tubes and then in 1941 to 47 US government had uh, built uh, tried to build this ENIAC so the main motive behind uh, building this ENIAC machine was to do uh, ballistic calculations like uh, the missile calculations and it this machine could perform 5000 additions or uh, subtractions in one second and also you can see here this one has only 20 uh, 80 bytes of uh, memory that means each word can hold uh, each word can hold uh, one uh, four by uh, four bits of uh, sorry four bytes of information or uh, 32 uh, bits also it has used 17,000 vacuum tubes as I said again vacuum tube or relay or a transistor is nothing but a switch the more switches you have the more design okay the more uh, complicated circuits can be designed okay and then uh, the weight itself you can see here 30 tons which is insane 30,000 kilos for a computer right and then uh, six girls use it to work for this computer if you if they want to feed a program all they have to do is replug or resetting plugs and rechange the switches or vacuum tubes position so this was how this ENIAC uh, machine was built and then 
1949 but uh, yeah, one more thing they couldn't make it on time uh, for world war 2 because of the complicated design and all this stuff it was delayed and then in 1949 at sac uh, with that is electronic delay storage automatic computer but, uh, the feature in this machine has this could store programs as well as data am i okay always remember program is nothing but a group of instructions for example in c program you write int main and then int a equal to 10 whatever if you write 10 lines that is nothing but program program is nothing but group of instructions and also data so what is data data is uh, a equal to 10 you are giving some data or uh, nowadays the data can be image or uh, uh, or it can be a audio file or it can be a number it can be your name and all this stuff and then in 1947 uh, the invention of transistors happened so why transistor uh, like played a key role how transistors played a key role in the computing industry because of its first reason is uh, the size the size is so small and so and because of this you can accommodate more transistors the more transistors you accommodate more logic or more operations can be performed right so uh, and then in 1950 alan turing wrote uh, artificial intelligence and 19 uh, the like uh, or you can say turing complete also uh, that means uh, a language can take uh, or a computer can take decisions on the input and it can store that input for the to perform the next operation also and then 1952 uh, grace hopper as i said earlier right she worked with harvard markman and she wrote the first compiler so what is compiler compiler is nothing but translating a translator that translates higher level language into lower level language why okay because during those days as i said it was all about binary language we were using to keep, like if you want to write a program the only way that we had at that time was uh, change the switches and give the input in the form of binary language that is quite complicated so uh, she came up with a concept like what if we can write a human readable language and that will be converted into lower level language uh, with this compiler and uh, she wrote a compiler and she named it a0 system uh, for univac computer so this way uh, we got, we have got uh, the human readable language and then assembler and then assembly language and then we have got higher level language today we have reached a place uh, where 10000 lines can be written in a couple of hundred lines or even within 100 lines with a language like python Uh, with the features of uh, object oriented programming like uh, uh, inheritance abstraction and all this stuff and then uh, so that is uh, yeah in 1957 robert noise gordon moore co-founded a company called fairchild semiconductors and later on this has uh, become intel corporation and that's how we have got intel processors today Also, Gordon Moore uh, had written a paper called Moore's Law. Uh, that also we will be discussing in the next session. Like, what is this law is all about? Like, number of transistors would get doubled for every 18 months, which is very interesting concept. Uh, for example, uh, the current Mac has, I think, in 2017. Earlier, I used to have a MacBook. That one has 16 billion transistors. and uh, as i said the more transistors we have the more operations can be performed that means uh, the faster your laptop works so in uh, in one word uh, in in uh, in uh, in one sentence the conclusion is earlier we used to use this big big uh, wheels and then spiral and all this stuff and later on uh, this was replaced with uh, relays electromechanical uh, electromechanical relays and then relays were uh, replaced with uh, vacuum tubes vacuum tubes were replaced with transistors so combining group of transistors we create logic gates logic gate is nothing but to perform uh, a circuit we use to perform a operation it can be a plus b for that we need adder circuit all this stuff uh, so uh, 
all this stuff uh, you learn more in detail uh, in your btech there is a con uh, there is a subject called dld logic uh, digital logic design there you will be learning and then uh, the combining these logic gates uh, together gives you the L uh, integrated circuit okay. so with this we have finished our session 4 article i would highly recommend all of you to go through this article and the url is just uh, visit tmkschool.com library uh, slash open library or you just visit tmkschool.com here you can see open library and on clicking open library you can find how computers work part 4 so with that today's session is completed and tomorrow we will be discussing uh, the next session which is session 5 how computers work part 5 uh, this is also very interesting like uh, at a physical level how computers are built usually and what's the logical level and then we will uh, boil down the things to the uh, very uh, detail like how computer works at a fundamental level like taking input then storing in the memory and then process and then output how it all works behind the scenes this article is also going to be interesting and this will be released tomorrow and uh, thank you so much i appreciate your patience if you have any doubts or suggestions kindly leave in the comments